afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vanessa Strike, and I am the Scientific Director of the Erasmus Center for Family Business. And I'm very pleased to welcome you here today, and I'm so excited that there's so many of you here. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Hausman. Uh, we're boat builders and not professional speakers, but um, I hope, uh, I, hope uh, I can give you some insight on, uh, on how our family business uh, has been operating during the years. We, as a shipyard, were at the end of the food chain. Nobody needs a boat. And all in all, as I said before, a complex business, complex products, and sometimes not too easy clients. And the clients, they have a lot of trust in family-owned companies, and, and especially with a law, also a long history. I'm still of the opinion that uh, communicating openly and regularly is the best in the family. Uh, and the trick is to get a feeling what's really, really bothering somebody and to address and deal with this. Family businesses, they're very much about trust. They're about trust and they're about relationships. They're much more about relational contracts versus transactional contracts. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Sebastian Sanders. I want to use this time uh, to share with you a story. A story about a family, a story about a dream, a story about emotions. When you start, you're young. When you become 40, you're still young. You become 50, you're at the top of what you can do. And then, then you start to realize there might be a time where they're not 10 years ahead of you where you still want to work. And you might not want to work in the company till your 70s. So you start wondering, can you, leave your, you cannot leave your business unattended. How do you avoid the risk that somebody destroys in a few years what took you your whole life to build up? We decided to take an objective approach, trying to bring that big problem down to manageable proportions. We did something that's very counterintuitive to family businesses. We brought in external advice. His job, to get all the emotions on the table, get all the views on the table, get people to talk. He had the courage to admit that there could and should be a future of the company without him. He had the courage to actively work on that future, in which his role would be smaller and smaller. That decision is a turning point and defines for me the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful succession. Times are long gone that a son becomes automatically the end son in the father and son corporation. Why did I make the choice to join the family business? It would be because I honestly believed that it was a great opportunity for me to take this step not because I felt obliged to do so. It's not a career switch that you can turn back when it doesn't feel well. When you go back to another company and say, fine, this, this didn't work out and do something else. It's a company where 450 families are attached to it. Families working there for 25 years, 40 years, most of them. And working with a major shareholder who himself has been a CEO of that company, that complicates the matter. And if that man happens to be your father, that's even worse. So are these my words? Or is my father still the puppet master behind the screens who's still running the business? Who's the actual decision maker? The old CEO or the new one? We've made it very clear to the organization that I'm the one who makes the decisions. My father is the advisor. That wouldn't work if he was not the one restraining himself and sit stepping back and saying, it's not me to decide this. And on the other hand, it's also for me to ask him for that advice and to decide to listen to that advice on many occasions. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Bernard Wiens. But my story is totally different than yours because I was the oldest son and my father got ill and died. It was just a few months after I finished my law studies in Amsterdam. So a typical I no choice. I had to take over the company, no experience at all. I knew exactly what went wrong in the company because he was the old fashioned guy, you know, and do it in a way and modern students like I was in those days thought totally different. But then I started and made all the mistakes you can make. You make them only once. That's the advantage or disadvantage is to be alone responsible. And it was clear already many years ago that my sons didn't want to follow. Family business are 
different because they have a strong focus on long term and continuity to the next generation. On ownership, on not forgetting their roots. That's different from, let's say, public companies. For family business, it's important that there are minimal obstructions when it comes to continuing the family business. Of course, the succession law plays a key role. We saw that it could end in situations where the fiscal laws had such a large impact that this endangered normal, healthy family companies. We are glad that this government continues the agenda of entrepreneurship and innovation. Under the old name of economic affairs, but with continuation of the top sector approach. A large concern for us is the finance gap, which I know is an important issue for family business as well. If it is possible that the government wants to add some extra guarantees, measures to support the credit issues entrepreneurs encounter, it's not enough. But the fundamental problems of the future of our total financial sector is not addressed. This sector is very important for the real economy and for the family business. You cannot put this sector in the doghouse for a few years. I've already introduced Ms. Hausmann and Mr. Sanders, so now let me take a couple of minutes just to introduce our other two guests. Dr. Isabel LeBreton Miller is an Associate Professor of Management. Our second academic expert is Professor Dr. Michael Carney. He is a Concordia University Research Chair in Strategy and Entrepreneurship. My name is Ingrid Verhul from the Department of Strategy and Entrepreneurship and I have a question about whether you think, uh, whether the panel thinks there's a trade-off between the goal of continuity and yeah, you see that family businesses want to yeah, deliver the business to next generations and introducing new <coughs> products into the market. It goes together. I think that's one of the challenge. We always think succession, succession, but also the innovation part is very important to bring your company to the next generation and etc. I think that's a crucial element. You can't se reposer sur ses lauriers to to rest on uh, your past success. You really need to renew, and that's quite a challenge uh, uh, to make sure you're having very entrepreneurial people, yes. entrepreneurial family businesses. I would say that um, you know family businesses have both advantages and disadvantages, and uh, you know if they didn't, if they, were, they had just advantages, they, they would just be the only kind of business, and there would be no other. But there's other kinds of business, and, the, and they have advantages and disadvantages too. And I think with respect to innovation, family firms have a special kind of advantage with with innovation, and um, and it, it's I can I think you captured it nicely with the description of the the gradual over 150 years, the gradual accumulation of knowledge. You know, from make, making little wooden boats to these massive ocean-going yachts, there's there's a clear line of innovation. Now, th th there's I think an in, a vested interest in the family company of, of doing that, not taking too much of a risk, and it provides that kind of continuity and innovation. Now, if if you work for one of these big multinationals and you're playing with other people's money. Um, you, you may be prepared to roll a dice on, on, on you know, bet the company kind of, of role, but you, you know you don't suffer the consequences, and, and so you see uh, a very different pattern of innovation in, in those kinds of companies. And I like to react to the to the implied contradiction between the long term view and the, and the innovation, because for me innovation in itself goes hand in hand with a long-term mm -hmm. view because many innovations take many, many years before they actually pay out. And I invite you to raise your glass and a toast when you receive it to the launch of the Erasmus Center for Family Business. That's good. Thank you. Well, succession is one of the most important and one of the most dangerous things in family business. Right. So this is uh, a topic that needs to be considered very, very well. And you can, you, you can of course, try this by trial and error, but you don't want error. Oh, the existence of centers is essential, in my opinion, for any, kind, any field in general, but family firms in, uh, in particular, because uh, they allow to aggregate different uh, views, standpoints, uh, but more importantly different types of constituencies, shareholders. I think family businesses do have this advantage of being able to have a long-term orientation 
that allows them to encompass, forces them to encompass more stakeholders. And instead, when we have private businesses taken over, taking over, there's a lot more short-termism, there are more layoffs, there's more opportunism, and there's significant agency issues and social issues. It really highlighted to me the importance of the next generation. And uh, both from the current generation that's running the family firm, they said, uh, you know, we, we need more about the next generation. And the next generation who we had speaking today, such as Sebastian Sanders, it was very much, we need more about the next generation. I think so much has been on the previous generation, and it's about how about us? How about us who, who are taking over? And, and different workshop groups that we've had, and focus groups that we've had. We, we felt focus groups to talk to people about what is it that you need to know. And they have said very clearly to us, we as the next generation need more. You know, we are different from our fathers. Um, we are different from our mothers. We're different from our grandparents, and, and and we need more. So I think very clearly the focus on the next generation leaders.